It shall never be got from meditation, from <clears throat> what people want to eat, not eat. <laughs> Mm. As salamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salam. Sayyidi, how do we connect to our shaykh when we feel so low and evil? Low and evil. You feel low and evil, then that's okay. Because what Allah described to Prophet about his nation. That your nation, because Allah created them, <laughs> is never get tired of sinning and they never get tired of forgiving them. So Allah created the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> to be big time sinners and Allah purified and cleansed them and gave an immense power to Sayyidina Muhammad <laughs> to wash his nation to make them to be pure and purified. But because of the imperfection of their characteristics, they're in need of Muhammadun Rasulullah They need the intercession of Prophet and That's how Allah created a love. He said, I'm going to create only one positive and that's Muhammadun Rasulullah and you're all negative. You all need you all need the intercession, the nazad, the support, the love and the nearness and proximity to Muhammadun Rasulullah Otherwise imagine if Allah made a nation filled with just everybody's fantastic. They would all think and deem themselves independent and as a result, well we don't need anything, we are also very high stations. But actually the love that I want your nation to want you, to need you to ask for your intercession, to be with you. So that's a, is an immense blessings. And that's why Burda Sharif and all these things that we're told to recite, we're told to recite the Lara Khirat, we have the Burda Sharif and the Salawats and, and the different books, is for what? It's not for your entertainment but was that you were supposed to read those and read the English and understand what you're reciting. That I'm coming to you and asking from either a spoon or a cup or a handful from your kawthar and from your intercession and perchance you will give me according to my sins. So if my sins are heavy and big then they're coming for a big intercession from Sayyidina Muhammad So it's not expected that everybody going to come shining and that's why the shaykhs we said that they are the people whom Ya kan abudu ya kan istayn ahdina sirat al-mustaqim sirat al-ladeen anamta alayhim they fill their bus with those people. They fill the bus with people whom angered Allah, who are going astray from Allah Why? So that they get the intercession of Prophet in oceans full. That Prophet throwing upon them oceans and oceans of barakah and blessings and lights and nazar. Why? To clean them. You don't see shaykhs going around uh, to pick up all the scholars, oh no, no, we just want scholars, let's go from bus to bus, pick them up, get on the channel only for scholars. No, no, they want those whom are angering Allah those whom have gone astray from Allah And then they put them in the bus and then they keep coming up to Prophet and then, please say, Ya Rasulul Kareem, grant your nazar upon us, grant your love upon us and oceans of blessings begin to pour upon the souls of the shaykhs and all their students. So that's why and that's how. So alhamdulillah this is an immense blessing, this is an immense rahmah. Allah created this system for us to seek the love and the nearness and proximity of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's why it's so offensive for anyone to ask anything about the love, the ishq, the mawlid, the necessity of the mawlid. This we know for 30 years of our life these, these, these types of questions and they just bring deceit and deception. So those are not, not anything that is tolerated. Only way is the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad 
السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ سیدی سیدی there are people who are breatherians meaning they don't eat and drink and survive by only breathing is this practice allowed? these are like Hindu magic yeah these things are not allowed What's not allowed is to ever show yourself as if you have an ability. Our standard is Muhammadun Rasulullah you are to have a family, you are to have food, you are to eat, you are to pursue business and work and pray and have a balanced life, live as if you are human and everyone is human and don't show yourself as anything other than that. Your spiritual reality and your spiritual ability must be hidden and for you and your Lord to know. And that love is a hidden love and don't come out and profess it that I'm this, I'm that and this is my name and this is my rank because Allah gave that love to His khawas as a hidden love, said, I'll love you but it's you keep hidden and that's the, that's the reality of their ishq and their love is that they're not doing it for everyone to know their nearness to Allah but to be nothing. And this was the standard in Naqshbandiya, there was no miracles at all allowed. And especially now during the time that's so close to the Dajjal. So that they eat, they drink, they don't show and draw any attention to themselves, look we breathe, we levitate, we don't eat, we turn into crystal rocks when we die and we shrink. These are all the magic of the dajjal and the jinn. The jinn are giving them something to eat from a jinn world. So they're eating something, you just don't know what it is and it appears that they're not eating food and water or whatever these, these different uh, what we would call magic is. So those are, are, are not to be done especially in these times when it's closest to the dajjal and his agents will begin to do this. Remember the dajjal is a jinn. And he's coming with all his nefarious armies, with all their nefarious tricks. They're going to offer healing on a massive scale in which people will think, why I have to even go towards the Divinely Presence? These people are healing me and I can just go to their clinics and they send this light upon me and I come out. They don't actually come out healed but they come out with an illusion of being healed. And that that mind and the impression that the jinn put over the person's mind, their mind believes it, they see it and all sorts of magic is being and put upon and cast upon people. So it means that these times of difficulty as we draw closer and closer into the immensity of difficulties then those are all to be abstaining from that. And everything is purely for the love of Allah the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and a path of humility. Anything that you watch is for entertainment purposes and those people are playing with nefarious jinn, this is not allowed. And you watch and we sat with people whom are very dear and we're watching a show and they say, oh I can talk to ghosts and say, oh this person is really good, they talk to these ghosts, they talk to the spirits, they don't speak to anyone that died. The ability to talk to somebody death is a high level awliya that they have to have a permission from Malik al Maut to enter into a state of a person's grave and to deal and communicate with that. So that's not something that any of those people on TV especially show them drinking, smoking and every type of crazy character but they're, they're psychics and they can talk to the dead but no there's a magic show again. Because everyone has a, a jinn attached to them and many jinn and those jinn live a thousand years. So imagine the jinn is accompanying you and says, yo Ahmad likes these tennis shoes, Ahmad has this hat, Ahmad has this favourite sweater and Ahmad's no longer here that jinn keeps telling everybody and the guy's, oh yeah I'm, I'm connecting with Ahmad and he's saying, oh remember no John those, those red shoes I had, those were amazing, oh how he knew his red shoes. <laughs> so these are all <laughs> these are all the tricks of, of magic because nobody ever comes and says, oh my god you don't know I passed away, I was burning, there was a fire, there was all sorts of difficulties. 
So nobody talks about those things. It always seems to be sort of ridiculous uh, subject matters and items and clothing. And that's because again the jinn race that, that live thousand, two thousand years, they accompany many people, they see all the actions of everyone's doings day in and day out and then they begin to communicate that with other people. Then they say, oh I'm connecting with that person. No, they're just connecting with these spirits and these jinns and they're the ones revealing all this non-essential information. So this magic show is about to open up even much more upon this earth. Why? Why will every channel have all these magic things happening, why? So that to pull people away from belief, why have to sit and meditate, why have to worship Allah why have to do all these things? The magic seems to be faster and more entertaining to look at but then they sell their soul and their faith for a small price. That's why the rush now is to make the connection, make the connection so that when you are a connected person you immediately watch something and you're inspired that this is magic, this is bad, this is this trick, this is this trick and, and to reveal to guided people so that to safeguard them that how are these things happening and, and why are they happening, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam uh, As Sayyidi described that Sayyidina Imam Ali is alive what would be the role of Sayyidina Imam Ali during the time of Sayyidina Mahdi and Hazrat Isa salam? I would imagine the role is to safeguard the nation and some powerful fighting. <laughs> He's a, a owner of an immense power and qudra and the, the owner of uh, Huma Rahmah, the, the phoenix of mercy from Allah Ali Huma Ya Rahmah is the, the phoenix of rahmah from Allah a fire from Divinely Presence and that his madad and support and imdad, sahib and imdad, the one whom gives madad and supports the nation through the power of Allah to the power of Sayyidina Muhammad and to be present upon the earth and holding the reins of tariqahs because as the time goes then the the inheritors of that reality as they passed the reign of the secret of the tariqah had to be put into the hands of Imam Ali Salam is the only one who can hold it. In our version of Nadi Ali it describes that he's the safeguard of this religion. Allah placed him to be living on this earth knowing that no man would keep that trust. So that his physicality is continuing the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and safeguarding the Muhammadan way and the trust and all sainthood has to be granted through the signature of Imam Ali So there is no saint if they don't have a love for Imam Ali they are not a saint. Because their signature has to come from Imam Ali that he signs off on their walayat. So it means that also he's giving them a support and giving them madad and, and uh, every type of blessing and, and uh, nazar inshaAllah. And his grandson is the one whom we are waiting for, Imam Mahdi So this is the, the grandson of that reality and the immensity of that reality. That's why the, the love for Imam Ali is so essential. And that that love and that respect and ihtiram is so essential and the role that he plays is a, is a, is a major source of power. Mawlana Shaykh described that he trains on one of the realities 12,000 rijal and that they're in training spiritually. And that at that time of his appearance when Allah gives the appearance to appear, they'll have the same shaykh, they'll look like Imam Ali Salam, and there'll be 12,000 horsemen and women and they'll have steeds from paradise and the speed of their horses the sizes are gigantic and the speed of the horse is the speed of vision where the horse, where the rider is looking the horse is moving to. And the 12,000 of these riders 
will be coming from Jabal Kaf and their Imam, their leaders, Imam Ali Salam inshaAllah. Amongst one of the realities of this appearance and the, its, its reality upon this earth inshaAllah. But so many and so many blessings that the love is so essential to keep that love, keep the respect for Imam Ali Salam and the Ahlul Bayt and Holy Companions so that Allah dress us and complete His favours upon us from all directions and all realities inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Is it possible to go into the quantum realm and if so how to enter it? To the quantum realm? Quantum is light so that's malakut. Quantum tuhibun Allah quantum what they call quantum <laughs> quantum is a study of light. Quantum reality is the whole study of light. Quantum computing is a computing method that will be based off of light. Then the reality of numbers and the duality of numbers, the reality of one and nine where right now they're computing at one and zero, that there's on off and it's not really on but it's a current. But when they begin to bring out the reality of nineteen then it's an on and the reality of nine. The reality of nine is that it's a current both on and off at all times. So that this quantum that comes is the nefarious reality of the Muhammadan reality. That means everything will be opening in parallels. As Allah brings the reality of nineteen onto this earth and that's Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussain and Muhammad There are 19 guarding these letters. Means when he brings the reality of this Ahlul Bayt and opens the reality of 19 and opens the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem then the demonic one which is always shadowing the heavenly then they want to bring their 19 and their reality of demonic computing and demonic energies. For us to enter into quantum means entering into the light. So all this teaching is actually the quantum teachings of Islam. That's why when you repeat this to regular people on a Jummah they don't know what the heck you're talking about because it's like quantum computing. Even the people who use regular computers don't even understand quantum computing. They say, oh it does a calculation but not on this plane. It goes into a different dimension with a different speed, brings the calculation back and they don't understand where it went and how it came. Well that's like tafakkur, the same understanding that you can sit somewhere, sit in your living room, connect your heart, you're gonna go somewhere, nobody knows where you went and then you'll come back with information. So the quantum reality of Islam is the muraqabah, the tafakkur and the tariqahs hold that reality? Some that know about that, Nashbandiyatul Aliya is the soul of all tariqahs. It will teach all the other tariqahs, that's why they watch these and then all of a sudden they start talking because they're learning from this reality. They don't give credit to this but they're learning from the soul of, the, of all tariqahs. They learn from this reality then they begin to go out and, and propagate it, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi is there a reality behind the number 13 or is it a misunderstanding like Friday the 13th? Yeah, anybody who likes numbers and letters then you go to the Nur Muhammad website and there's an abjad table and the abjad table is a, is a spiritually scientific way of how they write the huruf. And there's a table in powers of nine and each letter in a different order called abjad. 
and then like a periodic table that shows numbers and the power. So then you begin to study that abjad table to understand those huruf. Thirteen in abjad is the meem, so it's the most important letter. It's the meme of Muhammad It's in the thirteenth position and it's the second line down so one and three becomes four. Since it's the second line down it becomes four with a nukht, it has a value of forty. So then a meme has the power of thirteen, so anytime you see the number thirteen somewhere that has to do with the secret of Muhammadun Rasulullah and a meme. And then it has a value of 40, so anytime we say, oh you have to do 40 day chilla, is why 40 days? So that you can become Muhammadiyun. And Sayyidina Musa had to do 30 plus 10 so that he could receive the Muhammadiyun dress. So Friday is our holiest day. So Friday the 13th is then a very superior holiday and it's carrying a tajalli of Jumma and a secret of the meme. And that's why shaitan is so fearful of that and he propagated and taught that so that to keep that tajalli away. So he inspired all these people to build buildings with no 13th floor because he knows sacred geometry, he knows this sacred numerology and he knows the power and the danger that, that they face by it. So in their buildings they don't have thirteen because of their superstitions. And they put into the movies that, oh Friday 13th and horror, hor horror for shaitans but not horror for Ahlul Rahman, this is their most beatific energies and blessings come. Anything from TV, remember it's marketing for shaitan that Allah inspire for people to learn from. They, they tell you, oh if uh, shaitans are coming put garlic, uh, well that will scare your angels and bring more shaitans into your home. If you put garlic cloves so vampires won't bite you, no they bite you more because now you're more tasty for them. It actually scares the angels away. So everything was the reverse. In their, in their horror movies and in their teachings because shaitan wanted to propagate things to protect himself and his, his dominion or his minions inshaAllah. Mm, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa If we get angry or do a sin that is in the house, should I apologize aloud and seek forgiveness by the unseen companions in the house? If you get angry and make a sin inside the house, yeah you, you can say, Astaghfirullah out loud because you're asking Allah's forgiveness. You don't have to say, I'm sorry people, but you say, Astaghfirullah <laughs> Lazeem wa tubu ilayk and you can make a little bit, La Ya Rabbi Tawbah, Ya Rabbi Tawbah, they all heard that, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah Lazeem and then you make your istighfar inshaAllah. Ma Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Ami Yasifoon. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>